He delivered his State of the Nation over the weekend. Now, let me tell you something, if you weren't aware of this. It is my honest held belief that this was a fundraising episode for ACT and a way to slap the back of funders pre-election. I'll give you the reason for that shortly. Let's have a look at the story from the weekend about this. Um, Mr. Seymour is still going on that he thinks his treaty will bring people together. God only knows how. David Seymour is pushing back against claims the ACT Party's Treaty Principles Bill is creating division. Dozens of supporters attended his state. Uh, look, I know, I'm sorry to start it. How the hell can you push back against that? Like, how can you push back against that? Because it's creating division. Like, you can say it shouldn't be fine, you could have that opinion, but to say it's not, how can you when it is? It's like one plus one is two. He thinks one plus one is doormat. It's because it because it just is. In Auckland today, where the party promised to deliver real change to oh, all God. New Zealanders, as the Prasad reports. As you always say, Chewy, not necessarily good change, but just real change. No, definite def change. Well, not good. The scones were a hit. It was an appetite for change, drawing in the act part. I wanted to highlight the diverse nature of the audience as well. Okay, just have a good look. They're the same colour as today. the scones, people. <laughs> I'm very excited to hear that there is a real change coming for the, um, you know, the country. We face a, um, a time when there's increasing division. The one that springs to mind is, is probably crime. Um, the safety in our houses, the safety in our businesses. David Seymour addressing their concerns in his State of the Nation speech. New Zealanders are ready for change, and if we don't take care of their concerns, then someone else will. But it's what the, the party's treaty print. I think what he means, I actually watched the whole speech twice. I do it so you don't have to. That's worth a super chat or two. Um, as he was talking about another government after that. They, they, the, again, I think the mainstream media has done a particularly bad job of actually breaking down what was said. We will, we will help out mainstream media as well. So I, I believe from memory he was talking about just, another another really, government will come along. It's just and, a really weird threat. Like yeah. if we don't do it, someone else will. It's kind of a threat. Yeah, it's like he's saying China will pop up and they'll do the change. It's that sort of vibe. I get it. And that's the, they, he's speaking, speaking to the right audience to have that kind of vibe about it. Trust me. It's just Principles, bizarre. Bill, that remains front and centre. We believe we can persuade New Zealand that this is a good idea that will unite New Zealand. The bill has been taking over political discussion. The Prime Minister saying his party doesn't intend to support it past its first reading. I don't intend to fall down the stairs tonight after the show, but it might happen. But my intention is not to. And I certainly don't intend to go into my living room and eat ice cream by the fistful. But I might like, change my mind. Like hand, literal, literal hand? Yeah, I, I don't like doing dishes, so no, just use enough. my hands. Fair enough. Making it possible, and if people want it to continue, then I suspect that our coalition partners might decide they do too. Christopher Luxon in recent days handing over responsibility for the bill to David Seymour as Associate Justice Minister. Now this is a really interesting question, yeah? I brought it up on here. Uh, Act Leader David Seymour will become Associate Justice Minister with responsibility for treaty principle bills. Now, here's my question. Why do you need a minister responsible for treaty principles bill if it's going to stop at the first reading? Mm. Why do you need to create a ministerial position for something that's got no traction and is going to go no further? I might sound like a bit of a conspiracy theorist, but it's a genuine question, Chewy. Why do they think, why do they need a minister, a ministerial position, to look after something that's going to be dead in four weeks' time? Because they don't want us to think that far ahead. Right. Or... Like, they're just talking about the first reading. Don't think about anything else. Or... They're just, we're not going to support past the first reading. Or it's not going to be dead. Mm. We'll have to wait they, and see. They want the media to, to front the message that national like even though they're not saying it they're not saying we are definitely not going to support this we have no intention of supporting it yeah they're two different statements and remember people and i'm not trying to like beat us up too much into the good books here but there's still been no other media outlet that i've heard yet raise the question of conscience vote 
Mm-hmm. Okay, so Mr. Luxon goes, we'll make it a conscience vote, and National doesn't support it. But funnily enough, enough National MPs do to get it through. So I'm just putting it out there. No one else has been saying that as far as I know yet. It's just a it's, just a possibility. It's all weasel words. Yeah. Yep. All, right, we're all keep, means nothing. We'll keep going with the story. I think it just makes a lot of sense that the person who is driving the idea uh, can talk to the government officials and make sure it's done right. It sends a message to Māori that Christopher Luxton is not going to listen to Māori. He is okay with his ministers attacking Māori. Despite widespread protest action and the Kingitanga's unity hui, ACT says it has no intention of backing down. If we say that the treaty principles debate is divisive, what we're really saying is we, we can't do anything where people disagree in this country. It was very, very... He's still oh, a shit, eh? Yeah. Fucked. Because both what? things can be... both Because you can say something's divisive and still debate it. He's basically saying... If we can't, if, if people think it's divisive and we can't, no, 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 no. You can debate it till the cows come home and it can be divisive. Both things can be true. It's a completely terrible way of worded it. Um, let me say as well now, uh, this is Professor Margaret uh, Mutu. Uh, she is booked in to come on the show tomorrow night. Uh, a couple of things we have to organise yet, but she is booked to come in on the show tomorrow night at nine. Very clear he wants um, to tell you to your way to you rewritten. Uh, and any consideration of Māori having any say in anything in this country, gone. The issue's likely to be a focal point at Waitangi celebration. Yeah, no shit. Remembering that it is a marae, and you always respect your manuhiri. But we're also very clear with our manuhiri. If you have caused offence, you must uh, expect to be told so. Based on the comments that some people have made, it will be more tense than other years. Tension with no release in sight. And Isabel joins us now. Kia ora, Isabel, along with addressing hot topics here. We're going to move on from this conversation because we've got more about the uh, about the David Seymour conversation as well, um, including the actual speech, which I think we need to get to because lots of things happened in the speech that we haven't talked about. Do you want to drop anything on the story first or are you happy just to keep trucking and we'll... No, no, no. Um, I, I, I did have a joke about um, referring to Seymour with the phrase no release in sight, um, but, but that's gross. So, so here's the conversation, right? that this was a fundraising, the, the the national speech, the speech of the nation. I mean, like, why would you do a, a, a speech for the nation? Now, what would you do it? The state of the nation, why would you do it? What's the point? Who wants it? Like, I, that's what I thought last weekend. It's like, why is he doing a state of the nation? What's the point? And the point is, in my honest held belief, it was a thanks for being f- funders before the uh, election, and it was a fundraising exercise in and of itself. Let's play this first 60 seconds. The amount that people have invested in getting us here so far, their time, their advocacy, their donations, never forget, please. (laughs) Um, People will come because they want to support this kaupapa. And uh, we suddenly find ourselves here at a time when New Zealand needs to fish or cut bait. I think that's why so many people have come out. But for whatever reasons you may have, I want to thank you uh, for buying a ticket, getting up on a Sunday morning and being here because you care about New Zealand. So, did you get it? Oh, buying a ticket. About New Zealand. No, no. I want to thank you for buying a ticket. People came to that event and paid to be there. I want to thank you for buying a ticket. People paid to be at his State of the Nation, and you would have heard it very clearly, him making some kind of jovial (laughs) about never forget the money, the funders and the donors. There would have been people there, in my opinion, who would have funded them into the election. So there's the back slap. And the fundraise for today was a bunch of those people, most of those people had to buy a ticket to be at his State of the Nation. It was a fundraising, I was going to say scam, not a scam, event, Joey. It, 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 it's mental that he's doing that now, that he is part of the government and four years away from an election. 
Like, yeah, this is the thing that they they were more successful this time around fundraising than they have ever been before, and they represent eight point six percent of the population. Like, they have no worries about money. He could have just had that cut, come down and have some scones and talk to David, your your boy. Yep, could have been free. But no, he's got his hand out to these people again, 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 again. Here we are in a cost of living crisis, and these people have enough money to pay to go and see David Seymour talk on a Sunday morning. Yuck. Um, yeah. The the part of the uh, conversation that I probably got most upset with, which was the part I'm going to play right now, when he quotes someone who I'm quite passionate about. Have a listen to this. Or it could turn out to be just another spectator to ongoing decline until some other government, perhaps with some other ideology, takes the path of our country somewhere else entirely. So a wise man once said, you get one shot, one opportunity. New Zealanders are ready for change, and if we don't take care oh, of he just quote him and him. then someone else will. Yeah, you know, a wise man once said, you've got one shot, one opportunity to seize everything you ever wanted. In one moment, would you capture it or would you let it slip? He's, he's quoting, at least, I, I give him this, at least he's not playing Eminem music like National did and having it be a lawsuit. But he, he's citing Eminem and that has left me cold, Chewy, to my bone. So... As, as someone that spent most of his teen years being desperately uncool, I can recognize it in other people. And I'm, <laughs> surprised, I'm surprised that David Seymour isn't in a wheelchair for breaking his back from self cringe every time. It, 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 I just want to beat him up for his lunch money. It, Disappointing enough that eight point six percent of the population voted for that man in his idea. Can and we also? also say, it's, 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 I'm going to I'm going to give some credit to him. He keeps telling us what we need to do. He has been very clear that he expects his coalition partners to do what the people tell them to do: to support this treaty principles thing or not. We need to tell them. That we will not stand for it. Hold, hold your nose and email a national MP, email Christopher Luxon, email your local MP. We have to tell them. We can't be silent on this shit. I just also wanted us to have a look at the audience one more time. One more time, have a look at the audience. Have a look at the blue rinse brigade, the bald heads, the white hair. What do you think they'd be thinking if he, they knew he was quoting Eminem? Because rap music, you know, evil, nothing good to say in that rap music stuff, Chewy. So, uh, um, there was one other clip I'm going to play you as well. Where is it? Uh, 2.58? No, that's not the one. It is the one at 4.37. Because something else that he said about uh, the USA, right? He went to the US for a summer holiday. Notice no one ever kind of says of of David Seymour traveling internationally. You know, Gul Riz raked over the coals. Anyone from the Green Party who travels and has an overseas holiday raked over the coals. Uh, Seymour in the States for his summer holidays, not a peep. Um, he, I did wonder about this, and if we ever came on his show, I'd like to ask him, how does Mr. Seymour feel that if you use America as an example, his voters are the MAGA movement from America. Where the MAGA movement would sit in America are where his voters sit in New Zealand. The equivalent. Now, that doesn't mean that he's necessarily Trump, but those people with who, were, if they lived in America, would vote Trump are the people who, living in New Zealand, vote ACT. Far, far, far more than national. Probably split between ACT and New Zealand first this time around, but certainly ACT. So here's the last part with him sharing his uh, pearls of wisdom about being in a being in the U.S. Uh, and his conversations with people in the South. I asked dozens of Americans, "Who's going to win Europe's election this year?" Now, full disclosure, I was in the South, 
But the most, the most common answer, in fact overwhelmingly, was Trump. Why? Because life was better before. And because... Which is actually not true. If you look at what Biden's done and what's happening with the stock markets at record highs and stuff at the moment. But that's the, that's the narrative. That's the game they play. It wasn't better before, was it? Not in the slightest. That's my favourite. He has, quote, steel balls. Um, <laughs> It's not like there's too much writing on it. Uh, <laughs> and then I would say, well, oh, yeah, but what about all these court cases? Oh, that's just a jack up because he's winning. Now, I don't want to take sides in another country's election, of course. Of course you don't. just say this. Of course you don't, because you wouldn't believe in Trump, but your supporters will. So of course you don't want to take sides. That would be detrimental to you. Any democracy needs trust in its institutions. And when half the people think the leading Republican candidate is corrupt and the other half think that the justice system is corrupt for saying so, then you've got a problem of division, something that I think is resonating around the world. Now, here's the point I want to make about this. Half of people in America think Trump is corrupt. The other half think that the justice system is corrupt, basically is what he's saying. Now, I don't know if it's half and half, but you know, there's a big portion on one side that think that, and there's a portion on the other side. What, tr what, what Seymour didn't say, because you could say the same thing about the upcoming referendum, half in New Zealand don't want to see it, half do. What he's not saying is, though, just because there's division doesn't mean that one side's not wrong, or doesn't mean that one side is correct. I mean, it does mean. You can still have division and one side of the conversation be right. You can still have division and one side of the conversation be wrong. His American example, half of the people are wrong. The justice system is not stacked against Trump. Trump is stacked against Trump and he's in big trouble. In the weekend that's just gone, another $83 million case was um, filed against him for defamation. So half of that audience is wrong and i'd like to bring it back to our referendum and go is it possible now that this division that we're seeing which is there but there's actually a perspective within that division which is right and a, dis and a, and a perception which is wrong just talking about and, and chloe says this all the time just talking and, and having a debate about the principles of the treaty fine actually not a problem with that it's, it's a good thing in our democracy the way he's doing it, the way Seymour wants to do it, as um, I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing a bit, but as Chloe Sprawlberg often says, is a binary, completely the wrong way to do it. And I just thought that was telling. He talked about 50-50. You know, it's like, it's like these people who think, well, if we're going to have a debate on the vaccine, we should have equal representation of doctors who think it's dangerous and doctors who think it's not. Hang on, it's 99.999% it's on one side and 0.00001% on the other. You don't get to have a 50-50 conversation with that. Division yeah, and doesn't I, mean multiple opinions that are correct. Chewy. Yeah. I, I, and I think that's the point. You see it a lot in the way that David Seymour talks as he frames everything as a 50-50. Um, you know, and he's, and he's talking about his anecdote, right? I also have come back from the States, you, you may have heard. And I have also spoken to dozens of people about their upcoming election. Mm. You know what, Pat? Do you know, you'll be shocked at this. 99% mm -hmm. of the people that I spoke to, out of mm. the dozens of people that I spoke to, mm. despise Trump and are afraid for the future of their country. Wow. Now, the difference there. Seymour was traveling in the South. That might yep. be something. Yep. I was traveling San Francisco to Colorado. Colorado is not exactly a left wing haven. Good for their weed, though. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, they've got Lauren Bobert as their, as their, as their, as their representative. Only right. for one district, though. But, yeah. You know. But I was speaking to, to cattle ranchers and people with cowboy hats and trucks and stuff like that, and they, they despise Trump. Yeah. So it's not 50-50. JK in the chat here says 64% of Americans think Trump should be prosecuted, 30% think it's all fake. That's not a 50-50 binary. That's yeah. not what David Seymour's talking about. Yeah. And I think for him to pigeonhole America from his brief to one part of the state, and I would imagine talking to one demographic of people. Like if you went to a KKK rally in, in fucking Tennessee and asked them, who do you think is going to win the election? 
they're going to go hail Trump. You can't come back and use that as an anecdote going, well, 100% of the people that I spoke to reckon that Trump's going to win it. You know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. And he will always talk about this binary. Yes, we're a divided country. Here, here's a newsflash, David. We have always been a divided country. And we will always be a divided country. Yeah. Because people think different things. We have an election every four years to find out how divided we are. How do we divide up our country and into what we want it to go for? That's democracy, something that he thinks that he's standing up for. What he's wanting is a country with no division, which certainly sounds a lot like let's get rid of political parties altogether and just rally behind my pink and yellow banner and on to the future. You know, it's, it's, he's not a serious thinker and a lot of people that follow him are just following the jingo, the, that, that gut feeling, that really ugly lizard brain thing of I think brown people are getting it too good. <laughs> they're also they're also all criminals and they're, I'm scared because of the crime. And I've come from South Africa where it all fell apart and I want to just rewind it back to where it was good for my people, but I want to do that here in New Zealand.